Hi everybody! I know it's been a really long time. I hope you all had a wonderful summer. I did and I also had a lot of ugh. <laughs> so we're not going to talk about that. What we're going to do today is share some estate sale finds that I recently acquired. I haven't gone to an estate sale in years. So that was very exciting. And also the patterns that I got during the summer. Uh, this was from the last time that Joann's had patterns for $1.99, which as you know, if you sew, was several months ago. And I didn't get a chance to share them, so they're not the most up to date, but I still thought, well, there's some fun stuff in here that maybe y'all would like to see. So thanks so much for being here. Um, my name is Bethany. This is Abundantly Inspired, and I hope to give you lots of ideas and or just entertain you. So uh, first thing I want to show you is not an estate sale find, not a Joann's find, not even a sewing find. But I did find a special little guy that I'm going to be adding to my Christmas decor this year. And I had to share him because he melts my heart. How cute he is. It's a little mouse king. A little nutcracker mouse king. He's got his little crown is uh, protected from right now. Um, so it doesn't get a little bent. But I had gotten him at Marshall's. He was um, $12.99, which I thought was an incredibly great price for all this work. Look at this little tail. Oh, it's so cute. So I just snatched him up and just walked around Marshall's just holding him. He's just so adorable, made of felt, um, a very fuzzy felt, which I think is appropriate, and his little gold crown. Yeah, I had to share him. So <laughs> on to, I think I'm going to do the patterns first. I'm just going to quickly run through them. I'm not going to give all kinds of details and plans of what I'm going to do, um, but also, I did get this little Always Be Sewing book. It's just a blank, um, ruled lined, ruled, that's hard to say, ruled line notebook. <laughs> Always Be Sewing. Uh, I paid $1.74, which I think is a perfectly acceptable price for something originally $6.99. So I'm going to take that out of the plastic and I can start using it now to... I'm trying to get better in writing down my sewing plans and keeping track. And my idea for this is going to be to write down, okay, pattern number or what I'm doing from upcycling or something I'm making of my own design and write it down and then start keeping a list. And then if I'm working on something else, I'm also going to start that and keep a list and just keep... That way I can check off, check off, check off. I really do like lists and I really do like checking off. I'm really not the best. I'm trying to get back into the habit of doing that on a regular basis. And I really do thrive at being productive when I do that. Anyway, that's a long story. I got a notebook, moving on. So I'm gonna do these. I think I have them in order from um, not that I don't like them, but the most excited ones, the ones I'm most excited about these patterns, I'm going to do last. So starting out, I got McCall's 8070 for this little pullover that I plan on making a bunch of them. Um, they have them with hoods and without hoods and a little pocket pouch. And I'm going to make a bunch of these because I don't know what it is, even at the thrift stores. All the sweatshirts that are in the thrift stores right now are, it's like they're already pre-worn in. And I'm not expecting things to necessarily be pristine new, although I love finding that at the thrift store. This was pristine new when I got it and thrifted it, um, this dress. But the sweatshirts have looked mangy for so long, so I'm going to make a bunch. The next one is Simplicity 8613. This is a guy's raglan tee. I'm thinking I might make some of these for my uncle and I, I hope to make some for my son if I can make them really perfect because I know he's he has a really high eye of quality or quality, I, I don't know. <laughs> so I want to make them really, really nice, get some really nice fabric and make some of those for him. The next is Simplicity 9949. 
and I thought this was pretty with the halter neck and I even thought I would make some of these. I have some really nice very thin wool that I had thrifted a while ago. You can still wear like a turtleneck under that for the winter, fall and winter, a long sleeve shirt. I liked that it had these pleats, if you can see that. It's like a, a pleat that fits at the top and then it opens up. So that kind of pleat makes the dress really swishy because there's a lot of fabric inside that pleat. I think it's called an inset pleat, not positive, but I'm excited to make some of those. The next is Simplicity, mm, not sure what the actual number is on this, let's see, 9914. Um, this is a 1960s vintage reissue. It's just like a little, they're using it I think is more like a beach cover up type thing, but I thought these would be really cute even like over pants or skirts, just like a little smock top. And then I like how this one is made out of lace. That's really cute. So I got that to have on hand. It's not an immediate plan thing. Next is Simplicity 9834. Oh, these are gorgeous. These are gorgeous. I love these hats so much. Really beautiful. I'm excited for that. I keep saying I'm excited. I'm thrilled. Uh, Simplicity 9679. These are some knit tops. Now that I know how to sew knit, those are really, really pretty. Love this. Love, love that. I did get some stretchy leopard that I thought I could do that. I thought, is that going to be too much like my grams used to dress? <laughs> she had a very Iris Apfel style. She was pretty wild. She loved a leopard print. Um, but that could be pretty cute. And the next is McCall's 8329. I got this for the one piece. I have not worn a bathing suit in years, but I have this and I have some vintage bathing suit patterns that somewhere along the way, I want to start making them because I now know how to sew knits. And I thought, how much nicer it would be to make your own bathing suit instead of trying to find something you like in the stores. So that could be pretty cool. The next is McCall's 8388. This little top, there's a few different variations. Really like that. The next, again, I did buy these at the beginning of summer. So the next is and McCall's 8317, and I do realize that this is a child's pattern, but this jumpsuit, I really love that. And I checked the sizing that it goes up to a 16, and the measurements are pretty close that I think with just a little bit of adjustment, I could make it, you know, bigger for my size and I would probably make it longer, but I just love that. And I thought there's gotta be some way that I can figure that out. Maybe it's a total dud, <laughs> but I liked uh, the idea of the challenge. The next is McCall's 8108. I was just checking, I was recording. And this is not a new one. This pattern's been out for quite a while, but I really love this version. So I thought I'd give that a try. McCall's 8258. This is another vintage 70s reissue. Very cute, kind of goony sacks kind of look. The long one is the one I'm definitely going to make. I love that. Then McCall's another vintage one. 8501. It's a vintage 90s reissue. I had this pattern when it originally came out. And I made several of them and I thought, oh my gosh, I totally would love that pattern again. I made this one every time. I think I'd made it out of ultra suede. Oh my gosh, it was so nice. And I wore it to death. So I'm going to make that again. Then McCall's 7381. That's also been out for a really long time. I love it. 
just a simple dress pullover, no zippers or anything. The next, oh, I don't think there's a zipper. Let me just double check. Nope. There's a little bit of elastic for the sleeves and three small snaps for right here. Then McCall's 8509. I just love these. I thought they had such a balletic look to them. And I thought you could even take this so that it's longer and make like a little dress. I thought that was so pretty. Then McCall's 8259. This is like a, I think it's a, hmm, it is a wrap dress. Yeah, a skirt. Yeah, it's a wrap skirt. I thought it was a faux wrap, but it is a wrap. Very, very pretty. I like all the different lengths. It's a good pattern to have on hand. Very easy. Now we're getting into the good ones. McCall's, it, these are all good. These are great. McCall's 8359. Very pretty. I have made something like this in the past. I've gotten two different patterns from Etsy. It's that kind of, I guess they call it like a milkmaid kind of look. But that kind of style, like this kind of style, it's become like one of my favorite things to wear. Very comfortable. And because it's got that empire waist, it leaves your tummy and your hips, like the, the skirt flares away from that. So it's very comfortable, especially if you've put on a little extra poundage. Uh, McCall's 8503, really love this one. Very, very, very nice. I'll probably be adjusting so that slit is a little lower. I don't necessarily need to flash my thigh but I thought that was really pretty and I likely will be putting some kind of strap at the top just to anchor that. Losing my stack here. <laughs> and one of the last ones here, we got Simplicity 9943. Love these, just a cute little corset top. You can make a ton of these very easily. I would be wearing it with something under it. And Again, over dresses like this, over blouses, over t-shirts. Very cute. And the last one that I am super excited. <sighs> Love this. Simplicity 9974. I'm sure you've seen a lot of people already share this. Love it so much. Absolutely love it. And it has that kind of uh, Degas ballerina, especially this kind of skirt. I would do like a layer of tulle and gauze over the top. I think that would be so pretty. Beautiful. Love the lace up, love the straps and that kind of real historical costume kind of corset. Definitely excited to make that. Where am I going to wear it? I don't know. I just want to make it. Maybe I'll just make it and hang it up. But I definitely will be making the skirt longer than that because that's like up her mid thigh and uh, hmm, that's a little much for me at my age <laughs> okay so that's the patterns very excited for those very happy also now I can finally file them away into my stash instead of having them sit on my sewing table and next I wanted to share with you some of the things that I got from so I went to this estate sale and like I said at the beginning, I have not been to an estate sale in years. And even that, I think I've only been to one or two. Maybe just one where you've actually, you know, you go into the house and you walk through the rooms and it's, it's a surreal experience. Um, I've done a lot of thrift, I've done thrifting since I was a kid and I'm about to be 56. So that's a long time and many, 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 many thrift stores in my life. I have not gone to a lot of estate sales, especially one that is a very old house and it's in a semi dilapidated condition. I went twice. I actually went one day and then I waited till the next day till just before closing just to see if they had any kind of bits left. 
And I actually, because I am such a, I don't know what they call it, but I don't go into a space and just necessarily pay attention to what I'm doing. Like I environmentally take in everything. So all the people there and the surroundings, and it can be a lot, like I'm, I'm like over processing stuff in my head. And even then after, you know, for a couple of days after I was remembering things that I had seen, but at the time I didn't kind of say, oh, you should also get that. Cause I was kind of like overwhelmed, but the person, as far as I understand, it was a lady and I guess her husband had already passed away, but, um, she had a lot of antiques and I mean, antique antiques. Now, mind you, they were not all in the best condition. She had this over, it's, it's going to haunt me now for the rest of my life. I'm going to be thinking that why didn't I get it? But it was one of those, I don't even know how to describe it. I'll try to get a picture and put it in. If I can find one that's similar. It's one of those above the mantle, horizontal. It's like a three panel type thing. And in the center, there would have been like a mirror. And on the sides, the, the shaping like that, there was two pieces of like an artwork, like a painting type of thing. It was missing the center mirror. But when I saw it standing on its side in the corner of the dirty garage, amongst all kinds of other stuff just like piled in there I saw it and I was kind of like oh but I also was looking at several other things and I ended up being totally distracted and then I had to carry out one of the big pieces um and I totally forgot to go back in there but that's okay I'm very blessed with what I did find um So this is the piece that I got at that estate sale and I absolutely love it. I want to show you the little, can you see the little letters? So I don't know if this came from some sort of local, um, like a general store, a pharmacy. I'm not sure this would be like a post office, but we do have really old post offices around me, so I do not know, maybe it came from there. And this can just constantly be changing for the display. And yeah, so, oh, so I had paid $5 for this and I absolutely love it. I am so thankful to have found it. And yeah, I just wanted to share. And this is the other piece that I got. This was, I think I've already put in a picture that it was dark wood. It was very dinged up. It was filthy. And I just cleaned it inside and out. And now I have it for I got my lipsticks in here. And then hair bows and hair bands. This is just um, more hair clips. So yeah, it's just, um, and I've got like tights inside. It's just one of those little pieces, not something I necessarily needed. But I just love it for some pretty storage. And yeah, also $5. Oh my gosh. The house had the appearance of somebody who had either smoked it didn't smell smoky though so i don't know maybe they smoked years ago they either had smoked a lot or had not cleaned and perhaps the house i don't know if you've ever seen those um kind of shows where people buy a house with the contents i think there's a guy on here that the, sh the youtube is curiosity incorporated i think not positive but you buy a house from a like a hoarder, a person who really had a way accumulated way too much stuff over the years. And he will sort through and kind of keep anything that's like valuable that he can either auction or 
maybe sell like in this, like in an estate sale. So they had a company, they were doing this estate sale. So, you know, you're going through the different rooms and kind of picking through people's stuff. It's just, it's very strange, you know, where you're like, it's one thing I think if you knew someone was alive and they're just like, here, I don't want to pack all this stuff. I'm having a sale. But this was something like someone had passed away and this was like the contents of their life, you know, or what was left that I didn't go super early. Um, I was just kind of poking through, not really even expecting anything to find anything because nothing really on the website interested me for the preview. But anyway, all that. I did get the two pieces of furniture that I will put in video clips of and I did there was a huge trunk like huge I don't think I've seen one of these trunks other than you see like backstage in like movies like for vaudeville you know where they have all the costumes and props there I, I cannot I honestly that's one of the things too is that trunk like I should have asked like how much is the trunk I didn't even it didn't occur to me till days later. I'm like, oh yeah, huh? That would have been a nice thing to have, like something that you don't find anywhere. Okay, anyways, um, I, oh, also right after that, a couple of days later, I had gone to, uh, where did I get this? Oh, I had gone to a antique store and just had found this little bag of vintage satin. This piece is the reason why I got this whole thing. Actually, quite a big piece of fabric. There's quite a few yards here. Um, but I thought that was really pretty to make either a really pretty blouse or some slips, some vintage slips. So I thought that would be nice. That whole thing was um, $3. So I can't beat that. Now, um, nothing was priced in this whole sale except for some collect, I guess they were collectible. I never recognized who they were. Um, I think I posted it on my community page, a picture of them, but everything else, nothing was priced. So you kind of either had to ask them or just bring up what you wanted and then they would give you a price. It turned out that these things were all, I, I the trunk was full of linens. And the good thing about that is nobody was looking at them. So everybody was milling through the house by the time I got there the first day and the second day. And I was over in one of the back bedrooms just looking through this stuff all myself. So I found some really nice treasures, I think. This looks like it was formerly a cushion. It looks to be handmade from the inside of it. Um, this selvage... Yeah, the selvage doesn't really give the name, but it kind of, it looks to be handmade. There was no zipper or anything in it. But I loved the fabric. I loved the look of it. <laughs> a little cat. A funky little cat. So I definitely got that. That was a dollar. I got this um, bark cloth fabric that is hemmed. So I'm thinking that this was either a curtain at one time or a bed covering, probably a bed covering. And that was really beautiful. Really, I love this because it's so faded and beautiful, like shabby chic perfection. I'm sure at one time this was a lot more vivid in color. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Y'all can tell me. It's that beautiful textured bark cloth. And maybe this was the original coloration, or maybe it's faded. Either way, I love it. That was a dollar. I got this chenille bedspread. This is actually faded in some spots. Doesn't matter to me at all because I'm probably going to be using this. It doesn't fit. It's too small to fit my bed. It's just a twin. But I'm going to use this for a sewing project. So that was a dollar. Um, and now... Let's see, this final one, beautiful, I'm thinking this is crochet, beautiful blanket. This does fit my bed. It's a full size and it's absolutely perfect. No holes or anything. That was a dollar. Now, I'm going to move this big pile. These two things, I found one one day and I went back and dug way deep down and I found another one. These look to me 
like they were little, I don't know if this was a curtain because it has like, it looked like they used some kind of snap tape on the back. So this must have adhered to something. I don't know if these went under a counter. I'm thinking that this was for, you know, those dressing tables, what do they call them? The kidney shaped dressing tables. And they used to have like skirts on them and then you would kind of open it, the skirts, and then you get to the drawer in there in the table. I think that that's probably what this was, but y'all can tell me if you know, I know definitely this is very vintage, but my idea for this was actually, I thought this would be so pretty to make a little skirt. So I'm going to try to figure that out. I've got two of them. So, you know, I <laughs> making me look like I've got a big poof. Um, so I'm excited for that. I just think, and it's basically all finished, hemmed, everything. The inside is impeccable. Um, the cotton is so soft and it's that kind of, you hear that? It's like ASMR beautiful cotton. So I'm excited for those. And those were each a dollar as well. So I'm thinking I have so much actually to share. And I know that, first of all, I appreciate anybody who's taking the time to watch. I know I'm like a hummingbird. I flit in here and then I flit away and then I come back and I go away. It's life. Nobody needs to hear the blah, blah, blah of what I've been going dealing with. Um, everybody's got problems. I'm just thankful that you're here with me. One other thing is one of the little tables that I got, a bunch of things. I had to call through a lot. The thing with these two pieces is like anything in this estate sale was filthy. Like it looked like there had been like a dust tornado, a dirt bomb had gone off in this house at one time. So like I said, I don't know if Maybe they were very elderly and hadn't cleaned in a long time. Maybe they had been a hoarder and every room was hoarded up. I don't know. I didn't see the before. So I don't know, but these things were filthy. Anyway, I did call quite a few things from this little table. Like I said, I have a bin of things. This very cute little celestial seasonings tin. I love old tins. Um, like I did not keep all the stuff because some of it was just junky. But I did get some beautiful buttons, beautiful vintage buttons. Look at these. Oh my gosh, these are, they're so tiny with the little rhinestone in the middle. Oh my gosh. And they're glass. Beautiful, beautiful buttons. Um, also these little metal buttons. So I got a beautiful little key. Uh, and then an assortment of some other one-off buttons, another vintage rhinestone one, and some little findings like hooks and eyes and things, some other buttons. Um, these two things, oh my gosh, these were so crusty and kind of all curled up. They were like curled up into like a little ball. And at first I was going to throw them out, and then I realized these are like little iron-ons that... I don't know if somebody had put like a fusible on them, but I am absolutely going to put these on something. Oh, so cute little fox and this little elephant. Oh, so cute. Little vintage. I did get a few patterns. These are, um, I don't even know if this is ever going to fit me with this cute little overalls and romper and shorts pants. I love that. I don't even know if these are complete or anything. This is a kid's pattern. Another, oh my gosh, I would totally wear this if this was my size. So cute. And this is, yeah, that's way too small to size up. And then a little PJ pattern. A little worn. So I got those. I got, let's see what else. Really pretty thing of twine. Some little lacy bits. Little crochet. 
I got a couple of these little vintage tie backs. Um, it's a really nice uh, hardware, like heavy duty, really heavy duty. I use that for a purse. I got a bunch of buckles to make belts. Um, I got a bunch of thread with these little wooden spools and you don't use old thread like this because you'll sew a garment. I learned this when I was very young. You'll sew a garment with this old thread and then you'll go to move and the whole thing will come unstitched. Don't do that because thread does deteriorate. I got some beautiful grow grain ribbon. Some cute little animal buttons. These are definitely more modern. Um, let's see what else. This beautiful bead that I'm going to put and make a necklace out of. Looks like it was hand painted. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Bunch of seam binding lace. So those were nice. Oh, and this one last thing. This is pretty wild. Looks like something at some point had chewed through there. This is, everything has been cleaned, everything. Um, this is one of those, what is it called? A stitcher sewing awl. And I'd always seen these, I have the needles and everything in the bag. I'd always seen these, but I never have come across one. So now I have one of those and maybe one day we'll do a video. I'll load up the, there's like a bobbin inside of here and you put the little needle thing and then you um you punch through and it pierces the i think they commonly use this for like leather um so i thought that could be pretty fun to try to try to see if i can get it to work um but anyways that's everything i just wanted to make a quick little video and i don't know how quick this has been with my ramblings but I wanted to do a little video and just catch you up. Also, to just kind of put some of this stuff away. Now I've had this little pile sitting here for a long time. I also got this super sweet little tin at the estate sale. So adorable. And I keep my little clips in there for sewing. And lastly, I got these two precious little porcelain horses but i hope you have a wonderful weekend it's saturday today i'm filming this i hope to get this edited hopefully today um and i love you all so much thank you so much for being here thank you so much for watching thank you so much for even caring about my videos or channel oh another thing i wanted to say is yes i did just thrift a whole bunch of fabrics and stuff but after taking stock whew, of all of my um, fabrics that I've been thrifting for the last while, sheets and the pillowcases and the quilts and the all kinds of curtains and fabrics like that, I have, I need to buy nothing unless it is super fantastically, stupendously wonderful. Like these, you know, a dollar, what am I going to say? No. Um, I'm not, I'm going to slow down and buy nothing for the rest of the year as much as possible that, like I said, if it's really tremendously wonderful for super cheap, fine, but I'm not going to be, um, piling on. Like I've been trying to accumulate a stock of fabrics. I've got so many things on a rack in front of me that I still need to photograph and list and put in my shop. And... I've just, I've got a lot going on that I need to play catch up now, but I just want to say that I'm on kind of a no buy, a, a no buy ish for the rest of the year. Okay. That's it. I hope some of this made sense. I hope, um, I was being clear in my sharing. <laughs> you don't do this for a while. And especially being an introvert, it makes it even harder to come back and then you go away again and you think oh yeah I'll just get back on and film and then you're just like oh my gosh like I don't know how to do this anymore <laughs> anyway I'll try to edit this down I love you guys thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day bye